Hi there, guys. It's Zach Davian here again. I'm back with another Challenger Casts episode. This is a high-level solo key replay, and it looks like we already have Red Team going in for a little bit of invade. TSM, Lust Boy, and Fabby both getting taunted up. Wonderful double taunt there by Piglet. Going to be forcing Lust Boy's flash away back under the tower on that Lulu. Because they trade a few more auto attacks, but nothing more considerable than a flash burned. But still, hey, a flash burned for no summoners on the other side. So... That gives red at least a small advantage. Down in the bottom lane, that's going to be where it's going to be most significant. Seeing as it was one of the bottom laners who had to burn their flash, Lust Boy playing that Lulu support with Ignite, actually, which is something I was going to mention during what I assumed would be the quiet downtime before the uh, CS got to lane and before the junglers really started going and doing all their jungling stuff. But uh, it, it seems to have quieted down now. No more further invades. Everybody going back to their more standard locations on the map. We've gotten right into the action with this one, guys. Lost Boy and Fabby going to be leashing for Nidhogg at his Golem Camp, Krug Camp, Rocks Camp, whatever it is you want to call it with the advent of the new map. Everybody's got their names all mixed up. I'm going to go ahead and call it the Krugs because that's what Riot say it'd be. But, I don't know. For purposes of clarity, I might occasionally refer to it as the Golem Camp, just so that everybody understands exactly what I'm talking about. And that was dangerously close. <laughs> Picks nearly taking away the big Krug. That would have been a big deal. Splitting the XP like that would have uh, would have put Nidhogg actually fairly considerably far behind in his jungle. But thankfully, Lust Boy experienced enough with Lulu to uh, realize not not taking the jungler's uh, camps early on not a good plan. So he's going uh, to go ahead and not do that and return to the lane. Where this Ignite is going to be giving him some kill pressure, but the lack of Flash is probably going to be countering that, actually. So, very useful for them to have managed to get that off of him early on in the game. Fairly serendipitous, you might say. As uh, they're trading backs and forth some auto attacks, and we can, uh, we can go ahead and talk about some of the other lane matchups as well. It seems to be an Ari versus Zed in the middle lane. That one's going to be a very interesting lane to watch. A lot of explosive potential for action right there. Two assassins fighting it out against each other as there's the glitter lines not quite landing on a tan hat. Some good damage coming out though anyways from the auto attacks and Diana too gonna be going down fairly low as well. Fabi and Lustboy they don't seem to care that that flash is down. They are coping with it quite well. They are pushing the lane though which uh, does mean that Lustboy's flash being down might become a bit more relevant later in the eventuality of ganks but, so far, Lee Sin's on the other side of the map. They've got a bunch of health off of their counterparts laning in the bottom side of the map. And, uh, they really don't have much to worry about. As we swap to the top lane, where Piglet and Seraxis are going at the mano -e mano Shen versus a Maokai, and it looks like a Lee Sin might be joining in the party. There's the taunt going to be locking up Maokai a little bit. He turns around with a wonderful Arcane Smash, though, and dodges to the side from the Sonic Wave from Styx Eggs. So, well played by Seraxis there. Takes a little bit of damage, but he's he's Maokai, he'll be able to regen that, and he's not really against too much of a lane bully in that Shen, so... Taking that little bit of damage really isn't gonna matter all that much. Anyways, he's coming out ahead in the lane. Shen's not gonna really be able to do enough harass damage to keep a Maokai down, even without that advantage. Ooh, Fabby taking two tower hits there. Probably didn't even want to take one, but certainly not wanting to take two. But uh, this is the kind of pressure that two... Very qualified players, even in a solo queue setting, can put out in a bottom lane. It's just, it's becoming a little bit obscene exactly how often Fabi and Lustboy get up there to land an auto attack onto Tan Hat or maybe a Buckshot like we just saw. And it's very, very difficult for Vayne to farm here against Graves. That's one of the reasons why Vayne is considered a fairly risky pick, because a lot of matchups can just trash her in lane, as we're seeing right now. Nidhogg? Maybe going to be going for the gank down to the bottom lane as Twisted Advance from Seraxis gets pulled right into a taunt that pulls him under the tower as well. The Ignite is dropped by Piglet. He doesn't have the energy to really continue chasing here, but he's going to just walk after him until his energy regens enough for the taunt to maybe come back up. But he doesn't want to chase any further than that. Would have had to go under the tower to do so. So kind of just... Actually, the trade really goes in favor of Seraxis because the lane is pushed up, so he's not going to have to use Teleport to get back to the lane. He came out lower in health, but it didn't really matter. He didn't give up anything significant. He's going to... Shen's just going to come back even in farm at most, so he's not going to get a lead out of that. He's not going to have to teleport back to lane, as I said, because it was pushed up nearly to the tower. So he's not in danger of losing any CS to his own tower, though he, he teleported back into lane anyway, so it looks like he's just really going for the lane pressure here. 
using that teleport to get back to the lane so that he can keep the lane pushed up against the Shen. Keep it pushed up to the point where Shen is losing CS to his turret and having to play around the pressure that Maokai is able to put out, especially with a Jarvan jungle. That is a scary combo. If Nidhogg does choose to show his face up top, Seraxis and him could have a easy time of locking down Shen. Shen is fairly tanky, so he might take a little bit of doing to kill, but it's uh, very, very difficult to escape the amount of CC that a uh, Maokai and a Jarvan can put out collectively. And it looks like Jarvan might be going for the very gank I was talking about. He's uh, coming through the lane rather than going around the side. And he's got the buff from the new Wraith camp. The one which allows you to see whether you've been spotted by a ward. And then clear that ward if you do find it. Tan Hat tumbling forward and dropping back to the other attack as Curse Piglet is getting knocked up and locked up here. He's forced to flash away from the slow, but the smite going to slow him again. And they're going to go ahead and go under the tower here. Arcane Smash doesn't quite connect, though. He didn't think he'd walk to the side that he did, as now I, Kenny Yu, is going to be leapt onto by the King of Poros in a 1v2. Stixake's not able to protect his mid as King of Poros flashes away from the Q that might have been able to at least provide revenge. But he's not even going to be able to get that because it looks like Curse Piglet is in a bit of trouble as Seraxis. Ooh, he doesn't want to go under the tower while taunted and King of Poros is going to be finishing off Stixiax with the help of Nidhogg and Seraxis manages to take down Piglet off screen. Overall, 4-0 kill lead for blue Everything went wrong there for Red. The 2v1 gank, which should really have gone in favor of Red there, it was, it was a 2v1. You usually expect that to go in favor of the 2 rather than the 1, was played beautifully by the side of Zed there. And he managed to escape, didn't even have to burn Flash in the impromptu 1v1 duel with the Ari to be able to stay alive and also consequently win that duel, which meant that he had it to escape the Lee Sin, run to his friendly Jarvan for support, all the while Piglet couldn't come from the top lane. The top lane was being entirely handled. He was shoved under the tower, he was forced to stick around there, and he was actually brought down in the end by Sorinax, so very well done there. Just lane coordination all over the map, all in favor of Blue Team, giving them a 4-0 lead and about a 2,000 gold lead on the board. Though we are only 8 minutes in, the game could still swing back in favor of Red Team, Especially if they can draw it out late, they do have a decent protect the vein sort of comp going on. But Serax is trading with Piglet up there in the top lane as Tan Hat is going to land the stun on Fabi up against the wall, but he is in a 2v1 right now, and it doesn't really matter that he got the condemn that he did, because Fabi's gonna come out of the stun perfectly A-OK -okay and get the kill with his shotgun. Speaking of kills, Jarvan is kill in jungle. He uh he uh died to uh to a chicken. So, that's a little bit embarrassing. First death of the game for blue team, not even going over to red team, it goes to the jungle monsters instead. Sirax is still pushing the top lane. Piglet still trying to contend with all of these minions that are getting shoved up into his face over and over again. As the first turret of the lane, of the game rather, falls in bottom lane, going into the hands of blue team and into the hands of Fabi, the gatekeeper. And uh, we have a little bit of a quiet moment on the map here. So we can go down and take a look at some of the builds. That's something I always love to do. Sometimes I don't really have the time to because some games are explosively action-packed. But this one, aside from that one moment of action all across the board. Ooh, stun against the wall from Fabi. Collateral damage and an auto attack buffed by picks. Not going to be enough to finish off the Janna. Brings her very, very low though. The shield from the secondary turret does keep her alive through that damage as she flashes into its range. So, good use of that secondary turret there, though. It's kind of bad for them that they are pushed up that far in the first place. Fabi getting ulted by the Lulu, as here comes I, Kenny Yu, spirit rushing forward. The charm doesn't land, though, as Fabi flashes away from it. Stixiax instead going for Lustball. You're going to be kicking him against the wall just to CC him up as long as possible, as I, Kenny Yu gives the first kill of the game for Red Team. Meanwhile, up in top lane, Curse Piglet is still having a rough time of it. Nidhogg and Seraxis going under the tower once again. Seraxis finishing off that kill, but dying in the process gives the second kill of the game over to purple team red team whichever one it is colorblind mode or not Del underscore and uh, underscore engine moved in from root. i'm so i'm sorry if you heard that that was my mumble client making voice sounds at me i can you oh oh diana can you save his life he's burning but he's also healing and it looks like he's going to be able to live as now tan hat is chasing after king of poros through his own turret he does have shadow swap up because that blue buff gives him a low cooldown 
on pretty much all of his abilities, is kind of how it works. And so he's able to swap over the wall and get away to safety, nearly picking up a kill, but some wonderful timing on the monsoon from Janna going to be keeping Ari alive just barely, just barely, over and over again. And Diana 2, S. Diana 2 might be in some trouble here. King Poros does not have ult or ignite, or indeed flash, so none of the big three cooldowns, but he has a double buff, and he's a fairly powerful Zed at this point. He's 3 and O. Oh. Though he also doesn't have Bilgewater color, so he basically doesn't have anything but basic cooldowns. Up in the top lane, Stixie Axe, way out of position. Seraxis manages to bring him down. They don't even have a turret to fall back to. <laughs> Piglet wanted that minion, though. He hits it with the Empowered Strike and then dashes away. As uh, Ikenny is having a little bit of a dance-off here with King Poros. Talks about the charm, but Poros just sidesteps that pretty neatly. And, um, we never really did get to talk about items, did we? Since I was complaining about how action always interrupts me, action went and interrupted me, and it looks like it might be doing it again. Lost Boy flashing forward and landing the Glitter Lance onto Kenny Yu. There's collateral damage as well, and it looks like Kenny Yu's going to be forced to use Spirit Rush just to keep himself alive. Always depressing as an assassin when you have to use your supposedly assassination complete ability, your ulti, to, to run away. It's just, it just feels underwhelming. Oh, they didn't quite kill the ward. Aw. Maybe they have a red trinket to drop that one. Oh, whoa! Fancy moves by Stixie X. Flies in and then jumps away to the ward, which was nearly not cleared. As uh, the rest of the team is going to go ahead and take down this secondary turret in the middle lane. It's, it's getting burned down pretty quickly, and while they do have an occasional Janna shield to try and keep it alive a bit longer, they uh, aren't going to be able to actually pull it off. Fabi going to get the kill credit for that one. And this is starting to look rather grim. For the side of red team, Serax is bringing down Stixiax after a long chase on the other side, and Tan Hat is caught in a very, very bad place. He is way out of position in the enemy jungle. No one is here to help him, and he's gonna run away as best he can. But the only direction he can run is the wrong direction. <laughs> he's found some minions. He found some turrets, and Lust Boy doesn't even seem to care. He's just gonna go ahead and try and go on back home to base while the rest of his team finishes off the very, very out of place Vayne. Seraxis is on a killing spree. 5 1 and 0 oh, Maokai, 3 0 oh, and 2 Zed. This is starting to look real bad as the uh, the dragon actually gets taken out as well. First dragon of the game going over to blue team. A lot of firsts going over to blue team this game so far. First turret, first dragon, first kill. Maybe the first victory as well. We'll have to wait and see for that one. Still a good, good chunk of time left before we get to the end of this game. And I don't really want to call it quite yet, though it is certainly heavily in favor of Blue Team at this point. I don't think anyone would be able to deny that without seeming a little bit silly. We should look down to the builds, though. I have, I have time to do that. Nobody's, like, killing each other right now. So I can actually look at items and talk about them. Uh, Zed has finished off the Blade of the Ruined King. That's a big power spike, not to mention the Brutalizer on top of that. That was all in one base, too, so that's going to be... A surprising power strike, power spike as well. There's the chunking shuriken landing on a tan hat. Blade of the Rune King, just as I mentioned it, used to slow down tan hat. And do <laughs> Fabi doesn't even care. Tosses out the collateral damage. He just wanted that fight to be over with, so he pressed his R button in the general direction of the enemy, and uh, that it, it did the trick. Now King Aporo is going to be kicked away. The Q does not quite land from Stixiax though, and the Z the Shen ult is forced out just to keep this Lee Sin alive. He's nearly going down the monsoon. Maybe going to be able to be enough. No. Cataclysmed right onto the face. He's going to be falling over as Curse Piglet brings down Nidhogg in return, though. This is a one-for-one -one trade so far, better than a lot of the fights Blue Team has been getting. Arcane Smash going to be holding Piglet up for a little bit longer as King of Poros is forcing his flash away as he swaps forward with a shadow. One-for-one -one trade, but but Purple Team was sent running, and Blue Team is on the offensive. So, while the kills are even, the outcome really certainly is not. The laser touching Seraxis for a few seconds there, and it doesn't even look like it did damage. This Maokai is getting insanely tanky, and he's going to go right in under the turret. There's the Lulu Oak going to be knocking everybody up around him. That is a big, scary tree. Tan Hat, though, turns around, and he brings down Fabi. Lost Boy is going to be the next target of this Vayne's ire. Really wants to get to that late game, and those two kills, giving him a double kill, going to be helping him get there. Oh, Seraxis, though, is joined by Nidhogg, and Diana, too, had a little bit of a rough time there. Janna is not a very uh, tanky person and was caught in a ferry. And caught in a place where only a tanky person could really have survived. Ooh, King of Poros leaping over the wall to smite from Nidhogg, going to be finishing off 
the Axis. Stixiax. Stixiax, that's how you pronounce it, I believe. When you're finishing off Stixiax, he's just a jungle minion to him. He was even in a camp. He was sitting in the middle of a camp and he got smited and killed. It was, it's like he was just going around in his jungle rotation and instead of a instead of a raptor camp, he, uh, he found a Lee Sin camp. And he, he said, yes please, I will take that. He's gonna go and take the Raptor camp as well, jungling that away from the other side. Even if you're crushingly ahead, as blue team certainly can be said to be at this point in the game, it's never a bad thing to take some of the small advantages as well. Don't allow them to overshadow the larger ones. I mean, if you could go ahead and push a mid lane turret or catch somebody out and grab a kill, that's a bit more effective than taking away a jungle camp. But if you can't do either of those things, if you're all alone, but there's no immediate threat to you, you may as well just go ahead and grab the Raptor Camp. But Tan Hat is being altered by the Zed here. The Pop is going to be finishing him off. Always satisfying when you get to see that happen, as Diana, too, now is slowed down by the spell he's edge. Ooh, nice charm landing on the King of Poros, though. He goes dangerously low, as up on the top side of the map, Fabi is doing a 1v2, and he is pulling it off in style. Stixie Axe is going to be going down, as Curse Piglet now is taking a few auto attacks from Fabi. He can't really turn and fight, but at least he can run away. Not quite as much can be said can be said about his friendly Lee Sen. Plus boy zipping his way through under the tower as Piglet is going to be going down. Seraxis is unstoppable at this point, and this game is starting to turn from a single boulder rolling down a hill into a landslide, picking up momentum as it goes. Minion wave cleared out very effectively, and the tower is probably going to be falling next. Powerful laser or not? They've got a lot of members up here, and that tower is already below half hit points. Yeah, it's crumbling. Quite literally, I love that animation that they put in. And, uh, Stixiax landed the Q in a Seraxis, but that's really not where they wanted it. They're landing a lot of their skill shots onto this Maokai, but he's perfectly fine with this. The rest of his team is taking down the inhibitor. Finally, they land a Q on a Fabi, and the flashy kick gonna be knocking him back in. The Luluot keeping him alive a little bit longer, but finally, I Can E is gonna be able to bring him down. Now, Seraxis is going to be charmed backwards into the team. He does have a lot of hit points and a lot of damage reduction. But he's going to be eventually going down to the true damage from the Ari. Now Tan Hat is tumbling away with the... Ooh, from the side, King of Poros comes in and he ults right in onto Kenny. You double kill so far. Kenny get the triple. He gets the triple with the pop. He's going for the quadra here, but he has to swap away just to survive. Curse Piglet does have some damage on Shen, but he does not have enough. He turns around with the taunt. Finally, he gets the shutdown kill. Ninja versus Ninja. Shen turns out to be the greater of the two. But Nidhogg cleans up the last two kills in memory of his fallen comrade. That is the ace going over to blue team, 23 to eight, six to zero in turrets. They have the only dragon currently on the board, and this game has become crazily in favor of blue team. Vroom vroom from Lust Boy, vroom vroom indeed. That seems to be the story of this game, just speeding onward and onward like some sort of onrushing train. Nothing can stop it in favor of blue team, and they Red team is trying their best to derail it. They're signaling the conductor, please, please stop. We have baby puppies in the way, but he just will not stop. He's barreling on towards those puppies. That metaphor got a little bit out of hand. I stand by it, though. S. Diana, too. Dropping some wards. Vision is one thing that might be able to derail the oncoming train. If they can get some good vision control, not only in their jungle, but on some other portions of the map as well, they might be able to pull back into this game a little bit. Shadow swap forward, but just just for some damage, just for some poke. Not choosing to go in right there. He didn't have enough, quite enough of his team nearby. And that's one of the things about losing a game up in this level. It's very, very difficult to come back from a game in this high level of solo queue because the enemy team will not make very many mistakes. That's the way that you come back from a game. You can't really make plays if you're this far behind. You have to wait until the enemy team makes uh, what I like to call anti-plays. They make plays against themselves, and then you take advantage of them. As, as in, they just make some pretty... Pretty terrible mistakes, but there's really not going to be very many terrible mistakes made up here. As uh, There's this wizard advance onto Piglet under the tower. They are diving in onto this Shen. They know that he is alone. They know where everyone else is. And so Fabi's just going to, with a collateral damage and a buckshot, bring that ninja down and turn his attention to the tower. Crumbles and falls to pieces, exploding in a burst of light. And uh, they're going to go ahead and push on to the next one. They've got no reason not to. They have the man advantage on the board right now. Even if they didn't, they could certainly take nearly any 5v5, even one under an inhibitor turret, possibly, if they were to play it correctly. If Fabi were to manage to avoid getting hit by the charm or getting insect back into the enemy team. But he took a lot of damage from the laser right there. This is actually probably a chance, sort of. For them to engage. Certainly a chance right now. Fabi going over the walls. The Q lands from Lee Sin. He flashes back over, and that was a little bit 
a little bit cocky, I would say, from Fabi, but he is known for that sort of play. Lost Boy getting hit by the Lee Sin Q, and he's going to fly on in, but there's the Luluo going to be saving his life. Or not really, because they didn't actually choose to follow up on that. It was kind of a bait, counterbait, counterbait situation. <laughs> in the end, the Lulu ult gets traded for the Lee Sin Q, so I suppose Red Team comes out ahead there. Flash! Taunt from Curse Piglet going to be instantly deleting the enemy AD carry. As Lee Sin goes in kind of to his death, that was a little bit silly, but Kenny, Kenny Yu's going to be following up and finishing off the kill onto Maokai. Now Nidhogg leaping in with the Cataclysm is going to be locking up a few members of the other team long enough for them to go down, and Kenny Yu and Shen are both trying to escape here. Piglet getting hit up by the auto attacks, Nidhogg going under the turret. The laser is following him, but it doesn't really seem to matter. He manages to pick up the kill onto Piglet. And he's just going to wait for his flag and drag cooldown. Or actually, no, he's just going to go to the turret. He wants that thing, and he's going to get it. He nearly falls. <laughs> that would have been a little bit embarrassing, but he does manage to bring it down before it does the same to him. And can the speed buff from Lulu be enough to save this ravening Janna who's out for blood? Ooh, maybe. Maybe. She does have that speed buff. The Zephyr has come back up, but Luzboy and Nidog are turning around. They're going to be able to 3v1 this because Seraxis has shown up. Ooh, Lejana just chased way too far. S. Diana, too. You had a bad time of it. I'm sorry about that. I know how that can feel. You just, you just really want to finish off the kill. It's a lone support. Nobody's around to do it. It's not your job, though. You're not very good at it. There's a reason. There's a reason you're not a carry. Tan Hat. Cleaning up some minions in the top lane, and I apologize if you hear that in the background. I do live with some roommates, and, uh... They can make noises. I am very sorry. But hopefully it's not too loud or too bothersome. Hopefully only I can hear it. And my mic isn't picking it up because I do have my door closed. But Curse Piglet going to be wandering away from the middle lane. Trying to head on back home to base. Because they really need to defend against these minions that are rushing in from the top lane. And these enemy team members that are rushing in from the bottom lane. Flash forward from Sarax is going right in on Kenny Yu. The collateral damage used right at the beginning of the fight. Fabi just wants to lay down the hurt right now. Leeson turns around for a cube, but doesn't really follow it up. That would have been a little bit silly to do so. And they're going to go after the open inhibitor. They didn't really need to get the kill onto Kenny Yu there. They forced away his ult, so he doesn't have that potential anymore. And Diana, too, is just gone. Being a very squishy Janna on a team that's losing this hard against some assassins is a very, very difficult thing to be. And that's going to be the mid turret falling, the, the bottom inhibitor falling, and next the mid inhibitor falling. That's going to be all three inhibitors down at the same time, 23 minutes into the game. This has become a little bit uh, irreparable, I would say, for the side of a red team. It would take some miraculous play at this point, or uh, the opposite of miraculous play from the side of blue team to be able to bring them back into the game here. Piglet's standing there for a few auto attacks, because he's Shen. He can do that if he wants to. As uh, Diana 2 coming in, he lands the tornado onto no one and goes down immediately afterwards, rushing in to his own death. Unfortunate situation there for the side of Red Team. And it looks like Maokai's going to head on home back to base. The rest of the team probably going to be following in suit. Picking up a last buy before going in for the final rush to the enemy Nexus. Looking to get that victory screen. Piglet is pushing out the only wave that doesn't have supers in it right now. <laughs> Soon... Soon they will all have them, though. Two supers per wave, actually. If you take down all three inhibitors, for those of you not in the know, it does in fact spawn two super minions per wave, which gets out of hand incredibly quickly. One of the reasons why there is such a low chance of winning after losing all three inhibitors. Nidhogg caught a little bit out of position, though. This could be what they need. Oh, the Q does not land from Styxiax, though, and so Nidhogg is going to be able to flag and drag away. And the double super minion waves have started roaming into the base. Zed kicked right back into range of Kenny Yu, though. He's going right in for the ulti. That might not have been the best decision by Styxiax. He's going to be falling over, and Kenny Yu's going to be dying to Zed, both of them being assisted by Nidhogg, and now Nidhogg is chasing after Piglet. Finally, Zed does fall over the damage from Shen, once again proving too much for the other ninja. But Lust Boy is going right after Tan Hat, and this vein might be in a lot of trouble. By might be, I mean definitely is. The Nexus turrets are under fire. There are seven or eight super minions at the Nexus turrets. This is going to be the end here. That Nexus is falling like butter to a hot knife. GG to blue team. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow. Hey guys, you are all the best. Um, that's it. 
I'll be around tomorrow.